welcome back to my channel, Mother Suckers. Hey, I need a theme song. Welcome back, Mother Suckers. Hey, I am Eloho. Girl, 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 girl. We are only on episode two, and I already can't wait for the reunion. Are y'all watching Real Housewives of? Potomac. I saw Bravo posted the stats on Twitter. Real Housewives of Potomac had the highest viewer watch out of all of the shows. So it was Real Housewives of Potomac um, and then Married to Medicine. And then I think Real Housewives of Miami. So shout out to the girls. I mean, it's a lot happening this season. Um, there's a lot of controversy and a lot of conversations happening online. So let's get right into it. I'm not going to go over everything. I do have my notes here. You know, we just going to get, we going to get into of the meat and the potatoes. So I actually want to start at the end of the episode. I want to get into the end of the episode first because last week I did some commentary on Osu where I did a video. I explained to you guys what Osu is and the impact that it's had now that it's being brought up onto this show. I got some commentary from some trolls, okay, saying that I need to apologize to NECA, you know, for my commentary about the Osu. So I will say this. I did commentary based on the content that was out. I don't, I am not biased. I don't have anything against any of these ladies. I'm just here to review what I see. Okay. And if I was wrong about something, I will come out and say, you know what? I judged based on that clip, but now we have this new information. So I do want to get into this Osu commentary first. So NECA was introduced to the show by Ashley Darby. And we quickly find out that Ashley doesn't really even know NECA. She knows of her from someone else. And that was really interesting to me because Ashley has been trying to push Sesame Street to get onto the show. Okay. Deborah is trying to big bird and Elmo her way into every scene. Yet she didn't invite Deborah onto the show. This is a part of the plot in my opinion. Okay. This is a part of the plot. A scheme. Ashley set up for him to come to you with the booze. She invites this Nigerian woman onto the show. NECA is also Igbo. Wendy is Igbo. And so you would think automatically these women would click. They're both Nigerian. They're both from the same tribe. And at first they did click. NECA mentioned that she met Wendy in the past and Wendy said, yes, I know her in passing. Um, the Nigerian communities are very tight knit. Everybody knows everybody or knows of everybody. You know, somebody knows somebody that knows somebody that know you. Okay. <laughs> They're at Ashley's housewarming and Nneka meets Wendy and Ashley's like, oh, you guys have a lot in common. You're both Nigerian. You're both Igbo. And Wendy is like, oh, you're saying her name wrong. It's not Nneka. It's Nneka. So there's a double N in front of her name and you have to... Mm, you gotta sound that out. It's like singing. It's like, mm, mm. So she's like, no, it's okay. You know, they're American. Let's make it comfortable for them. Let me just drop this clip. I gotta drop this clip because I saw this clip online and there was a man at the graduation and he said that young man's full name. I can't even pronounce his name. And I said, you know what? People can learn what they want to learn. Ola Watifi, Ola Wasamilori, Ola Wada Milola, Oyan Kunle, Ayan Faya Ola Emmanuel Michael, Ola Daly. So they're having their kumbaya moment, okay? And Ashley says, actually, that's enough kumbaya. Wendy, I need to take you inside. I gotta talk to you. So Wendy starts off the conversation. She's like, listen, Ashley, before you start, let me just give you your props. And I'm like, mm? What you what you what, the, what you giving her her what you giving her her props for Wendy? What she do? What she do? So she's like, I want to give you your props. You know, you have this home. You, you know, you provided a home for your children, and you know, you're a great mother, basically. And I was like, well, yeah, she did get the house, and I mean, the kids about to fall off the cabinet, but I mean, yeah, she. She's a mother. I don't know about great. I don't know her, but she, yes, yes, you are a mother. Women who have children should, should get credit. Okay. Cause that's a lot. And then Wendy starts telling her, you know, I want to be friends with you. I want to be closer with you. I want to be able to trust you, but I don't want to get stabbed in the back. And I'm like, well, if you don't want to get stabbed in the back, Wendy, eh? she's going to stab you in your back. In fact, the daga is in your back already. It's already there. You're bleeding. You have already been stabbed. This plot, this scene where you're sitting right now is a stop. You know, Ashley goes, you know, I know, you know, do you want me to tell you things? And Wendy's like, yeah, I'm not that friend that I don't want you to tell me anything. You can tell me when things are going on. So she's like, okay, I need to tell you about NECA. 
Okay. And at this scene is when we really find out how vindictive and evil Ashley Darby is. So she basically paints the whole conversation as if NECA is the one shading Wendy and as if NECA brought up the article about Wendy allegedly being old Sue. So we see the flashback and Ashley brings up Dr. Wendy. Now, Ashley knows Wendy has had to defend her PhD on this show. Wendy's PhD is a very sensitive topic for her because the women have tried to belittle her because of her PhD, which is crazy. How do you belittle a woman who has obtained a PhD? Eh? And now she's a professor. So she's very proud of her accomplishments as anyone would be. Now, the thing is, Ineka is married to a medical doctor. So when Ashley said, you know, Dr. Wendy, Ineka is like, oh, is she a medical doctor? And Ashley's like, no, she's a PhD. And Ineka says, oh, okay, a doctor of philosophy. Now, it could have been a little bit of shade there, but I think sometimes people just want to be clear on like, okay, is this person a physician? Is this person a PhD? Like, you know, there it is a difference. But either way, Wendy is still a woman with four degrees and a PhD. Ashley brings up the article about Wendy allegedly being old Sue. And it's really, it's really crazy to me how comfortable, <laughs> okay, how comfortable Ashley is bringing up this information and asking like, you know, they said something like she's cursed and she's this and her family is this and that. Girl, you are on uncharted territory right now. You in African history right now and you have no idea what you're digging up. I suggest you stop. And Ineka, she just simply explains what it was or what it is. And she just explains it to Ashley. She never brought it up. She never said Wendy's family was Osu. She just simply said, I'm not Osu, but this is what it means. Okay, so she just gave clarity on that. It was Ashley Darby's greasy little hands behind the whole Osu situation. Ineka, Ineka, how many times did I call you? Okay, Ineka, we did still see you saying that Wendy's mother submits names to shrines, okay? And you told Robin that Wendy does voodoo from the clips, all right, from the clips. So we gonna cross that bridge when we get to it. As of right now, Neka is good in my book. She's tall, she's beautiful, she's successful, she got a cute puppy. Now I do wanna get into Neka's storyline. I appreciate the fact that she's open about the fact that she's trying to, her and her husband are trying to conceive. Her husband, they were in the new house, which is still being built. And it's nice to see that they do live in Potomac. I think only three women actually live in Potom Potomac. None of these women are housewives. They should just say the wives of, where are they in Maryland? Like just say the wives of the DMV. That would be a good name for this show. The wives of the DMV. Because none of these women are housewives. Some of them not even wives. About three of y'all live in Potomac. I think Karen, Giselle, and Neca live in Potomac. I'm just saying, just say the wives of the DMV. I like that. It sounds a little bit more urban, but anyway. They mentioned that one of the rooms will be reserved for their future twins. And I said, <laughs> Nigerians and their twins, honey. Love of twins. Um, her husband has a thick Nigerian accent. I said, okay, so now we're in Lagos. Now we're in Lagos. <laughs> the, the fufu is here. So she did talk about, you know, trying to conceive. They've been trying for seven months. They want to have kids, but it just hasn't happened for them as of yet. She then says that she starts her day with bubbles, champagne, and she ends her day with bubbles. So she takes her prenatal vitamins with champagne. And I was just like, ah! <laughs> I had to, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you, wait, I hit up my cousin. So I have a cousin who is an OBGYN and I do ask her a lot of questions. And I'm like, this kind of sounds a little bit contradictory and it's very important for women, especially black women, you know, women who don't always get the right education around fertility and just healthcare, healthcare topics in general. So I said, listen, I'm going to be reviewing this on my channel. Can I get a statement from you? You know, a medical statement, an accurate statement about about drinking alcohol and trying to conceive, like what's the stats on that, right? So she said, a lot of women don't know um, when they're pregnant initially. So taking a prenatal multivitamins every day is very essential and important um, for women in childbearing age, especially women who want to conceive. She said, women trying to conceive should be trying to achieve their best diet. Um, she said, alcohol and smoking is absolutely a no-no when trying to conceive, especially women with fertility issues. Now, NECA did also say 
that, you know, she went and did her labs and she's above average as she's above average in everything. And I also just want to say, you know, especially to the women out there that it's important to go to specialists. I'm an advocate. Okay. I'm an advocate for women with PCOS and women trying to conceive. So I just want to make sure that, you know, the some accurate information is out there. I also did get the tea, honey, that NECA has a champagne line. So this could just be her way of, you know, promoting her champagne line, which is very smart. The show is a good marketing tool. But yeah, so I love the fact that she is sharing this fertility journey for us. And I do hope to see one day, you know, the twins in the house. That would be beautiful. Um, so another scene I wanted to discuss was Miss Mia. I also did a video regarding this. So we do know at Point that Mia and her husband Gordon filed for divorce or has divorced. But at this point during the show, they're still together. Now Mia, Miss Mia, okay, another tall girl, but she came on the show, I'm a boss, I'm a CEO, I make 400, 500K a year. Are you a boss? Are you a CEO? How much do you make a year? I remember some of the women saying like, you come off really strong with this, like, I'm a CEO, I'm a boss. And we do find out that she came from a foster home. She didn't have money or family growing up. So now that she's acquired that, you know, she thinks she's a shit. But it's interesting how the mighty have fallen, right? So she went from a 10,000 square foot home that they were renting. And when they said that she was renting that home, I knew, but I knew. Okay, I married a builder. I, he, 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 he taught me all, okay? <laughs> he taught me all. You don't pay $10,000 a month in rent. Okay, you get you a mortgage, you get you some property. So now we found out, you know, the whole situation with Gordon's job, his brothers kicked him out. Apparently, we still don't know the details with that. Like, that's really scary. Your own brothers, I'm confused. What's happening? In Bezel, I don't know. So we now see Mia in a 1,000 square foot apartment. Okay, so they're renting a 1,000 square foot apartment. We see a little moment where she is very, you know, irritated with Gordon. And he's like, you know, things are going good. Things are going to pick up. And she's like, well, you were depressed for a few months. Like, I, I didn't know what to do with you. And I was just like, oh, that's how you talk to your husband on camera who's dealing with mental issues? I was like, oh. I felt like we shouldn't be, we, we shouldn't have been in that scene. Like, why you, why are you doing Gordon like that? It's not his fault. He depressed. He lost millions of dollars. Like, damn, what, what happened to Rod or Dies? I thought y'all was Rod or Dies. Speaking of scenes that we really shouldn't have been in, Robin and Juan. Every time they show Robin and Juan, cause I watch it the next day from my Peacock app. I really just want to fast forward, but because I'm doing commentary, I will do it and watch it for y'all. But I've, I feel like, what? why am I here? Why am I in this moment? First episode, she's cutting out wedding pictures and organizing wedding album. Second episode, she's organizing her supplements. It's like she got to fidget. She got to be doing something when she's talking to Juan because she's so freaking uncomfortable having these conversations with him and then especially having these conversations with him on camera. She got to be doing something. And I'm like, well, goddamn, I feel like I need to be doing something when I'm watching y'all because y'all awkward as hell. I would rather watch paint dry then watch robin and juan make up scenarios and situations and say i don't care even in her tagline girl she says she don't care so what do you care about when they had that intervention with her and she was like you guys want me to just get mad and just scream at him these are things that i already knew about and i'm like why are these things okay in the beginning like let's not even talk about now why are you okay with your husband getting his nails done with other women why are you okay with your husband going to hotels with other women? Why are these things okay? Because we need to get to the root. I'm not going to get to the root, but she need to get to the root of, well, why were these things ever okay in the first place? And this is coming from a man who has cheated on her previously, which is why they divorced in the first place, okay? You need to go back to that point where she was when she was like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Like, that, that nigga need to be scared of you at this point. You divorced him the first time. He need to be scared of you. Like, listen, I ain't trying to get on her bad side. She might divorce me again. Robin is incredibly uncomfortable all the time when Juan is on camera, and it just makes me uncomfortable. This is a relationship about the children. Some people really do suck it up for the kids. He even forgot that he was miked one time and he said, man, if it wasn't for the kids, I wouldn't be here. And he ends this scene in episode two saying, let's just focus on the kids. If I didn't have a coin card, I'd be gone already. I want something more. 
And then another interesting thing that he said, so there was a situation where he went to a hotel with a woman. It doesn't make any sense, but in in their minds, it makes all the sense. It's too stupid to be a lie. And that that's when I realized how stupid she really was. <laughs> and she asked him, well, why didn't you go for it? You were already at the hotel with this woman. You paid for it. Why didn't you just sleep with her? And he said, did you see her? As to say, like, you know, she was ugly. I wouldn't sleep with her. Now, let's not act like men don't cheat with unattractive women. Unattractive in quotes. A man will say, listen, I don't like fat chicks and get a BBW. Cheat on you with a BBW. Oh, no, she got to be natural. I only like natural hair. Cheat on you with bundles. I don't like dark skin. She dark burnt. I don't like that. Cheat on you with a chocolate girl. I don't believe in that, okay? If there's a will, there's a way. A cheater will cheat regardless. And so he says, you know, she was unattractive. Did you see her? But then when they're talking about him being at the nail salon with a woman and at the laundromat with a woman, then it's, well, you know, she's young and she's attractive. Eh? And then Robin says, yeah, people say she looks like me. And he's like... Like, Robin, why did you just try to throw yourself in there? He embarrassed you on national TV. He said the other woman was attractive. So if you won't cheat with her because she's unattractive, then what about this woman who you just said was attractive? What about I don't cheat because I'm a married man? I don't cheat because I have a wife who I love and respect and she's all I need. Whatever happened to that? Why are we talking about how these women look? Okay, and Sharice made a good point. She said her ex-husband cheated on her with some boogers. If a cheetah want to cheat, he going to cheat with a squirrel, okay? Moving on. We didn't see too much of Candace, but Candace did have a sit down with her manager. She is moving on from the first label, Monarch, and she's moving on to bigger and better things. She doesn't want anyone opening for her or anyone being on the line with her because she feels like she could put the butts in a seat. And I said, yes, you can, Candace, especially while you on this show because I learned about you and your music career from the show. And I, you know, when you come to New York, my butt will be in a see and I'm here to see you so Wendy wants to do a talk show which I think is perfect for her girl don't even bother with the restaurant but Wendy still has her candle things going um but I think a talk show is right in her lane okay Nigerian restaurant that's a lot so she is a political commentator so I think the talk show will be right perfect a perfect segue right I think that pretty much sums up you know the main points of this episode and in episode one I'm seeing what's happening on Twitter what's going on but I really feel like this is gonna be a long season just fast forward me to reunion I just want to see the reunion like what's the girls giving now in real time in real life okay but y'all let me know your thoughts down in the comment section do you watch Real Housewives of Potomac who's your fave and least fave let me know your thoughts on episodes one and two let me know if you want to keep seeing this content and I will see you at the next one later